Hey everyone, it's a gray Saturday and no matter what I do, <laughs> the lighting sucks. So it's a good day to stay in and maybe have a chat about something that I get a lot of questions about. A while back, somebody who had built their tiny house with Builder was telling me how frustrated they were with the process um, and basically how, un how unhappy they were. And after they had explained to me everything that happened, it seemed pretty obvious that the big reason why the process broke down was because they hadn't prepared themselves to work with the builder. So today I'm going to go over the five things that you can do to make the process of working with your builder so much better and so much smoother. But first, coffee. Number one of the things that you can do to make working with your builder so much smoother is Know what you want to build. I know that sounds pretty basic, pretty simple. I'm always surprised that people don't have a clear idea of actually what they want to build. Uh, they know they want to build a tiny house, but they're not sure how wide or how long or what style of trailer. Knowing what you want when you go to meet your builder allows them to actually quote the job. It allows you to build a budget for your project. Um, and it just makes the process so much smoother. It's not your builder's job to tell you what you want. It's also not their job to take a vague you know, idea from you and magically be able to give you what you had in your mind. They can't read your mind and it's not fair to expect them to. It's like going into a hairdresser and saying, I just want a cute short haircut and expecting to walk out with something you actually like. That's not how it works. So my advice to you is to get really clear in your mind about what you want to build. Have an idea of what your priorities for your build are so that your builder and you can work around those priorities to get you exactly what you want. If you're not clear about what you want, you will be disappointed with the end result and the process is going to be so frustrating. So that is number one. Just basically know what you want to build. Number two, interview some builders. Don't expect that the first builder you talk to is going to be the right builder for you. Don't expect that the builder that somebody else used is going to be the perfect builder for you. I love the builder that I used, but they might not be the right company for you, for your build. You need to actually interview multiple builders, go out and see their builds, meet them in person, uh, have telephone conversations with them if you can't meet them in person, preferably via Zoom, via video, and get a feel for how they work. If you're planning on using a design that they already have, are they willing to be uh, flexible and make modifications or do you have to take it as is? How do they bill? It's really important to know how a builder works, it's really important to, to have a feel for their personality because you're building something that's very, very personal to you. And if you don't connect with your builder, it's going to be a very painful or at least a very disappointing process. When I interviewed builders, there was one builder that was on Vancouver Island that I wanted to meet up with in person. And I was out there for a, a little holiday with my youngest child. And I was there for just over a week. And in those eight days, even though I had talked to them on the phone, they could not fit me in for me to come out and see them. I was going to drive the two and a half hours to go out to where they were located, where their shop was, and actually meet them in person and see their houses, see some of their builds. They couldn't fit me in. That told me everything I needed to know right there. I was never going to be a priority. My project, my home was never going to be a priority for them because they were too busy for me. I didn't want to feel like I was just another house to my builder. I wanted my builder to be as excited about my project as I was. And that's exactly what I got. But if I hadn't made the effort to try and see them in person, I would never have known that. They built beautiful houses and they have a good reputation. I'm not saying they're not a good builder. They just were never going to be my builder. Interview multiple builders, meet builders in person if at all possible, absolutely definitely tour their existing 
builds or current builds and if possible and I think this is probably a non-negotiable talk to people that have lived in their houses so that you can get a reference so that is number two on how to make the process smooth is to actually choose the right builder by interviewing them and meeting them and getting a feel for them and making sure that it, it's a good fit the third thing you can do to make the process of building your house with your builder smooth is know how much you want to spend do some research uh, look at builders websites and see what their models cost in general talk to people who have built tiny houses or at the very least in your mind have a maximum that you're willing to spend to build your tiny house as anybody who's ever built anything whether it be a sticks and bricks and foundation house or a tiny house on wheels knows is that you almost always go over what you think it's going to cost but there should be a absolutely I cannot go past this amount line and you should have a realistic idea of what you can afford be sure to be clear with your builder on that you can't build a house if you don't know how much you can afford to spend the builder is going to quote everything that you ask them to and it's going to come out to be way more than you expected I know this from personal experience <laughs> and then you're going to have to decide what you're going to cut out if you know what you want to build and if you know how much you have to spend then it's easier to keep within your budget because you're going to have to make some difficult decisions those two kind of go hand in hand know what you want to build know what your budget is and then do your very best to stick to it if you haven't got the cash up front to build your tiny house and if you're counting on selling your current home or uh, an asset in order to fund your build you also need to be realistic with your builder about how that money is going to come in and you need to be clear on how they invoice if it's time for the next deposit because normally you will put multiple deposits down as the process goes along and you haven't got that cash then everything comes to a screeching halt and they start on another build and that can slow the process down substantially it's really important to know how much you want to spend and have your finances in place or at least have a very solid plan for how that money is going to come to you so that you can pay for your project number four be willing to change your mind be flexible this one kind of feeds off of the previous ones you know what you want you know what your budget is you've chosen the right builder but now you're in the design floor plan quoting stage and uh, sometimes you can't have everything you want based on the budget that you have or the size that you want to build so you need to be flexible be willing to make some sacrifices in order to get your must-haves uh, I've said in previous videos and I will say it until my last breath decide on what your priorities are for your build and then make those the uh, non-negotiables and everything else be willing to be flexible on my priorities were a great big kitchen a home office space that's a dedicated space and a bedroom that I can stand up in and walk around to make the bed everything else was something I'd be willing to be flexible on listen to your builder your builder will have built multiple tiny homes and they know what works and what doesn't listen to their advice ultimately it's your decision but the whole purpose of hiring a professional is to take advantage of their experience and their professional knowledge one of the things that I thought I wanted was the loft to be over the uh, living room so when you walked into the house the loft would be right there over the living room and I wanted it open in the kitchen my thought process was you sit in the living room you stand in the kitchen so it made sense to me but when I worked with my builder she was the one who really made me rethink that and her advice was have it open when you come in the house so you have this sense of openness and spaciousness because you don't spend that much time in your kitchen but you sit in your living room quite a bit and she was absolutely a thousand percent right anytime somebody walks into my house they comment on how big it feels sorry about that <laughs> my light went out I am obviously not a professional 
Number five, keep the lines of communication open. There are a lot of decisions to make when you build, big and small, and you want to be part of that process. Keep those lines of communication open. Have regular check-ins with your builder, either in person if they're building in the same town as you, or I was building in a different city. So I had regular telephone conversations and Zoom conversations, and my builder would send me regular videos of the updates. You know, at the end of each week, she'd just go through and video what was done. That made me feel like I was part of the process and that was super exciting, but it also allowed me to keep an eye on how things were going. Your builder will have questions for you along the way. You'll need to make decisions about appliances and fixtures and sometimes you'll have to make adjustments along the way like I did when I had to go with a hot water tank versus an on-demand hot water heater. And when your builder has questions that you need to make decisions on, respond right away. That's what I mean about keeping this communication line open. It has to come from both directions. When they need direction from you, respond right away. When you have concern or a question, ask it. Don't be afraid because ultimately they are working for you, but you guys are working as a team. And I think that's how it works best is when you feel like you're working as a team. My advice to you is to always be in regular communication with your builder. Keep an eye on your build. If, they're, if you're not able to see it in person, have pictures and videos sent to you so that you know what's going on. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. I think those are the five things that will really make a difference when you're working with a professional builder. I know that they are the five things that made a big difference for me. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. It would be awesome if you'd give the video a like and uh, share it with somebody you think might like it. If you're not subscribed, it would be really awesome to have you as part of the family. So please subscribe and I will see you guys next time. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. At least 